السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد uh, Our dear viewers welcome to another live edition of our program Ask Kuda Our phone numbers beginning with the area code are 002 then 023855132 and the other number is same area code then 0100546932 the Facebook page should appear on the bottom of the screen. It's DR Muhammad Salah official. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Alhamdulillah, uh, this is a live edition of your program Ask Kuda. So we'll be more than happy to start collecting your valuable calls and concerns. Meanwhile, I will begin by answering some of the questions which you have received on the page as usual. The first question is from uh, Monty. Uh, the questioner says, if we don't shave the pubic hair for more than 40 days, will our prayer be uh, accepted? What is wrong with shaving or not shaving certain hair of one's body? And this is without making distinction or difference between male or female in this regard. So the upcoming sunnah or traditions applies for both. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said as in the hadith which is collected by uh, Abu Dawood, the Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَقَّتَ لَنَا فِي قَصِّ الشَّارِفِ الشَّارِبِ وَنَتْفِ الْإِبْطِ وَحَلْقِ الْعَانَ وَقَصِّ الْإِذْفَرِ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا This is very interesting. أَلَّا تُتْرَكَ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَ Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, he appointed for us the maximum period of time that a person can leave the nails, the underarm hair, the armpits, and the pubic hair, and trimming the mustache for men, maximum, maximum 40 days or 40 nights. But it doesn't mean that the person can leave it up to 40 Rather, the person should do that on a regular basis for his or her personal cleaning and hygiene. So removing the hair of the underarm and the pubic hair may be done on a weekly basis, maybe every a few days, every couple of days, depending on the need for the personal cleaning. Okay, But if the person neglected that for a reason or another, it shouldn't be for more than 40 days. 40 days is the maximum, okay? But would that affect one's prayer if he doesn't do it for 40 days? And after 40 days, no, it would not invalidate the prayer, but he has uh, neglected and opposed the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is the sunnah of the pure nature. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muhammad from Ethiopia. Brother Muhammad from Ethiopia. Wa wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Koda, Muhammad. Mute your TV, please, Muhammad. How are you, doctor? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Please mute your TV. Okay, okay, doctor. Yeah, go ahead now. Hello. Yeah. Doctor, I have four questions to ask you. Yeah, go ahead, please. The first one is, uh, what is the ruling on uh, calling ourselves uh, Salafiya? Calling yourselves? You mean to call yeah, yourself yeah. such name? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The second one is... Uh, how to make a ruka to Mahram girls or ladies, especially, you know, we are in mixed universities and they are sick and uh, how should we do? They are, we have uh, many opinions in our uh, jama'ah that we want to clear for us. 
uh, in which condition? In the masjid, in the classroom, uh, in parties? Where exactly? In the, in the masjid. In the masjid. In the masjid. Okay. Now, uh, the third question is, uh, can I be able to keep uh, or uh, store my money in a bank that operates both interest and non-interest banking service together? Mm. Yeah, both interest and non-interest. Both they do in the same bank. And uh, can I be able to store that money? Okay. Next question, please. The fourth one is, uh, can I be able to post my photos on social media, like uh, Facebook or uh, so on? Can I be able to post my photos, my image? Okay. Thank you, Muhammad from Ethiopia. His first question is, is it permissible to call himself Salafiya? Uh, you mean Salafi, uh, because the Ya here is to ascribe or to attribute any person to a place or to a figure or to a time. So we say the Quran is uh, two parts. There is Makki, which was revealed in Mecca before the migration. So it's called Makki. We add the Ya, Nisbatan ila Mecca. Then we say Madani because it is ascribed to the Medina time, the era which is after the migration. The word Salaf means predecessors. So it refers to mainly the generations whom the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, have admired. He said, Khayru nasi qarni. The best of people of this Ummah, obviously, are my generation, the companions. Then those who shall come after, uh, after them, who are known as the followers or attabi'een. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ Then the third generation, those who come after the followers, they are known as tabi'i attabi'een. Then afterward, problems would arise and people will take it easy on the, the religious commitment and so on. So the people who ascribe themselves to the earliest generations of this Ummah, they assume by doing so, we're following the footsteps. It is okay if you want to call yourself such name, following the Salaf, the predecessors, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And if you don't, there is no problem whatsoever. What matters is not the name. Actions speak louder than words. What matters is your behavior is how do you observe your religious duties and how do you deal with people to be continued inshallah after this call assalamu alaikum sister amina from the usa assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah go ahead sister amina uh, okay i have uh, three questions yeah <coughs> um the first one is uh if one finds that their heart is not as connected to Islam as it was when they first converted, mm -hmm. uh, what are some steps that they can take to renew that sweetness? Okay. And uh, being from the United States, I often get asked a lot of questions about women's rights in Islam and stuff like that. Uh, why would I convert to a religion that's so heavily uh, dominated by males? Mm -hmm. Um so I have two questions in regards to that that I've been asked. Um, the first one is, uh, can you explain the ruling on hitting one's wife and under what circumstances would that be permissible? Mm. Uh, and the other one is, um, why is it that in Islam uh, it's always portrayed as a men's religion uh, in terms of like the well, everything, like the rewards that men get in Jannah, as opposed to the rewards that women will get in Jannah, and so on and so forth. Mm. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, that is two questions. You said you have three. Oh, yeah, one more question. No, no, it's two. that was two questions. And yeah. The third, one, the third one I asked already was about um, the converting to Islam and finding the sweetness in it again. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Sister Amina, how long have you been a Muslim? Uh, it's going to be going on eight years. 
Masha Allah, Masha Allah. And uh, uh, what you said, are you from? I'm from California. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you have uh, plenty of Islamic centers nearby. Alhamdulillah. Okay, good, Alhamdulillah. And do you uh, regularly go to the masjid or to the Islamic center? I used to. I've kind of um, pulled away from it because I've just seen a lot of corruption there. Really? And uh, in, many, in many of the masjid that are around. So I, when I first converted to Islam, uh, I found it to be very beautiful that all races could be in one room worshiping Allah at the same time, the way that he deserves to be worshipped. But more now recently, I've seen um, a division amongst the Muslims. There's a lot of cliques and, um, you know, the Arabs stay with themselves and the Africans stay with themselves. And us converts, we just kind of get thrown to the wayside. Mm. So. Okay. You may as well collect my number or leave your number um, in the control, inshallah. Uh, for further discussion about this matter but I would be more than happy to answer your questions right now insha'Allah let me finish answering Muhammad from Ethiopia so with regards to the title Salafi the word itself doesn't make any person better than another Muslim what makes a Muslim a true Muslim is his or her practice so wearing a shimag which is the headscarf for men, then an outer garment, which is neat and highly decorated and all of that, would not make this person supposedly Salafi and a better Muslim than another Muslim who's wearing uh, a nice shirt and trousers, for instance. Rather, they practice. As far as the religious commitment, that is something between you and Allah the Almighty for the prayers, for the fasting, for you know, the rest of the rituals or the ibadat. Now, the determining factor is how do you deal with others of your own faith and of others who are not following your faith, with others who are other human beings or others, animals perhaps, nature itself. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of all of you and those who will be the nearest to me on the day of judgment and will have the closest seats to me are the best of manners those who have the best of manners those who deal with people in the best way in the hadith which is narrated by Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu an and Abu Dhar al-Ghifari the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Three beautiful advices. The last one of them was nasa bi hasan. Be well mannered in your relationship with all people. If you're so, then you are truly following the Prophet and the predecessors, the companions, and so on. But if you're cruel, no matter how long is your beard and how big is the prayer mark in your head and how many days you fast. If you're harsh-hearted, if you are being judgmental of others, this guy is a good Muslim, and this guy is rebellious, and this guy is an innovator, and this guy is whatever, please stay in your room, lock yourself in your room, make sure that you do not hurt others and hurt their feelings, because you are a transgressor. It is not the name whatsoever. It is not the title. You want to know what I'm following myself? Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, "Huwa sammakum al-Muslimin min qabl." He has called you Muslims. This is the name that Allah the Almighty wants us to bear and to act upon and to behave accordingly. It is not the name; rather, it is the behavior. It is your actions. It is how you deal with people. It is very important to follow the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ and obviously the way of his companions and our predecessors. But it is also very important to study their akhlaq and to learn how they dealt with people and how the Prophet ﷺ dealt with his companions, with his family members, with the, his wives, with his enemies as well. Our sister Amina from the USA, from California, asked about you know, 
uh, that is it true as people say that it is mainly man's religion and she's asking about what non-muslims ask that the women rights and when is it permissible for a man to beat a woman I'd like to present before you what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this regard when he said la yadribu illa la'im the one who lays his hand on his wife is la'im, is licky and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever laid his hand on a woman whether in a state of peace or the state of war sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said in the other hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may the peace and blessings be upon him khayrukum khayrukum li ahlihi wa ana khayrukum li ahli the best of all of you is not the one who does more sujood and more prayers and all and, and more fasting rather is the one who is the best to his family to his wife to his children so he's not an angel outside and before people and a monster at home no at home he is a lot kinder than he is even outside he's not pretending to be nice outside then with his wife I know even a lot of Americans who they are married only because of the social position because of the political position they're holding so at home they are not even talking to each other but they just have to appear before others as if they are lovely married couple and this is not the case no Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the best of all of you is the one who is the best to his wife to his family and obviously to her wife uh, husband and her family as well okay and I'm the one who is the best of all of you in this regard this is what the Prophet sallallahu said wa ana khayrukum li ahli and he's our own mother this is the teaching of our religion sister uh, Amina Assalamu alaikum sister Maryam from United Arab Emirates Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I uh, watch your show as often as I can and I have a question to ask you Yeah I am uh, since now one year and a half I have an evil eye. I have like, you know, anything that I am trying to do in my personal life or in my business, kind of and when I try to open the door... Sister Mariam, Sister Mariam, I wasn't able to hear the last couple of statements. Uh, I lost you. Go back, please. Oh, sorry. I, I told you that since one year and a half, uh, I'm suffering from evil eye from somebody who, you know, put me a evil eye or I don't know exactly how you call it. Mm. Um, my question to you is, how can I remove it so I can get my life back? Because mm. right now my life is kind of a hell for every single thing that I'm trying to do. Although I am Muslim, I pray, I fast, uh, I do my prayers, um, I make a lot of istighfar, a lot of du'as. But subhanAllah, nothing works for me. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I want to ask you a question, Sister Mariam. Uh, and uh, do you assume that you know the person who cast an evil eye on you, that you already know him or her? I've met her once. I'm sorry? I have met her only once. Okay, I mean, are you certain or almost certain that she is the one? Yes. Okay. Yes, 100%. Okay. Uh, I'll answer you inshallah when I come to uh, answer your question. Thank you, Sister Mariam. May Allah give you ease. Um, obviously, Sister Amna, uh, I didn't finish answering your questions. I just, you know, I was referring to what the brother said from Ethiopia in his first question about being Salafi or, um, you know, is it permissible to call yourself so? His second question is uh, mixing and the masjid between men and women and so on. Okay, since you said in the beginning that you were asking about, you know, tr calling yourself, you're following the way of the predecessors. And uh, obviously the predecessors or the companions and at tabi'een and their followers have been strictly following the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do we have any clue how 
the Muslims, the companions, used to pray with the Prophet ﷺ in his masjid, in al-masjid al-Nabawi, or we don't have any information in this regard. As a matter of fact, we do. Okay, tell us. Was there like a barrier, a partition, a wall, a curtain? Um, tell us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said the best of the rows of men are the first and the best of the rows of the women are the last in order to create a natural gap in between so that men would pray uh, up front, then children, then women. This order is simply because of the nature of our prayer, is because of the nature of our prayer. Under any circumstances, it doesn't make the prayer of a man more valuable than the prayer of a woman. Nor does it make it the opposite whatsoever. And inshallah, in a little bit, I'm going to quote upon you three references from the Quran that when it comes to offering the ibadat, there is no difference whatsoever between a male or a female from the Quran. But it is because of the nature of our physical prayer of make ruku'ah, bound down, making sujood, and so on. There was no barriers, there was no curtains, there was no partitions whatsoever, but there was the natural uh, separation through having the minors or the children in, in between, and recommending for women to pray in the rear of the masjid, and recommending for men to compete over praying in the first row, then obviously the best is the second row, the second best, and so on. The Prophet ﷺ appointed a door for women by the rear of the masjid and he said, please let only women enter and exit from this door. So men would not uh, compete with women in the same entrance. Women were wearing their hijab and men were lowering their gaze and it was a very modest environment for this reason. If this is the case in our masjid, no problem. If in our masjid that uh, some sisters do come not wearing properly and will not stopping anyone from coming to the masjid and I urge those who are running in Islamic center especially in the west to be welcoming the comers not repelling them and warding them off even because of the way they're wearing so if you designate a prayer area designated area for ladies such as they make sometimes the uh, the second floor it is not really the second it's a higher level then the main musalla for men, that is perfectly fine. Having a, a, a room where they can see us and they can see the musalla and they can see the imam, where they can have their children and there is a, like a soundproof so it would not affect those who are praying, that too is fine. But as I said, we are not required to make a physical barrier because there was no physical barrier at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So in case that there is no fitna, alhamdulillah, and everybody in the masjid is on the same page, we can keep it the same way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muhammad from the KSA. How are you, Shaykh? Assalamu alaikum. I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Brother Muhammad. Shaykh, I have a query. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I had... A I am actually from India. In India, there is, uh, for Muslims, there is no option of uh, the um, Islamic banking system. Uh, only conventional banking, all the banks, you know. So what happened is uh, for nearly three years, I am depositing my money. I have no other choice in India. Um, so uh, it was a good money. And uh, so every year I used to take the uh, interest and I used to give to clear it to, to give to poor. But this this time when I go there into the bank, you know, they said, okay, uh, what you can do is you can have another option in the option and you can invest in certain halal way. That means in certain companies such as healthcare, uh, pharmacy and something like that, you know, many companies uh, through this bank. I, um, I uh, with a good mind, I, I thought this is halal I, and I invested everything, uh, that money in that, in that company. But uh, now uh, I just wonder, you know, is that halal or uh, I don't know. And according to them, according to my understanding, one of the Muslim men in that uh, bank explained to me this is halal. And they showed the companies where they are investing. Those are uh, nothing related to alcoholism or nothing related to interest or uh, insurance or anything. Mm -hmm. Only the companies which is uh, halal companies. 
So my question is say, you know, is that halal? I don't know. And uh, that is my query. If it is not halal, what I should do? Because they said for nearly five years, I cannot take anything money of that because uh, if I am taking premature, I have to pay extra money. So I don't know. Uh, please uh, have your comments, please say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Muhammad from the KSA. Very important question. And hopefully, inshallah, we'll get to answer it in this episode. As I said, it's a very important question. Okay. Uh, now, the third question that Brother Muhammad from Ethiopia had is pretty much similar to this question. So first of all, he said, depositing uh, some money in a conventional bank. The bank itself has both sections, um, conventional and so-called uh, Islamic. And is it permissible to deposit the money in this bank? I guess now we can join Brother Muhammad from KSA and his question to this question as well. My dear brothers and sisters, if the person doesn't have a lawful way to deposit his money, whether it's a huge amount, large volume of cash, or a small amount, if you don't have the access to keep it in an Islamic investment or an Islamic bank, then your only option to, is to keep it in any conventional bank which is available. There is no blame upon you whatsoever because no one would ask you to keep your money under your pillow or keep it in a safe at home. This is not safe whatsoever. So keep it in the bank. But Sheikh, they generate interest and they give it to you. Do as Muhammad from the case A used to do. Do not leave the interest for them. Collect it and give it away. It is not a sadaqah from you because it is not halal. It is simply getting rid of the interest. So you're not blameworthy whatsoever? No, you're not blameworthy whatsoever. Muhammad from Ethiopia said, but they say that we have an Islamic transaction uh, department. And I walked into one of those banks here in Egypt, in Cairo once, and they said the bank of whatever, the department of Islamic transaction. So I spoke to the manager and I said, you know, when you have this huge sign which says the Islamic transaction department, what does it mean? It means that you are inclusively admitting that the rest of the departments or the main bank is not Islamic, is dealing with riba. Don't you think so? So he patted my shoulder and said, look, we all know all of that. It is basically to soothe and accommodate the investor or the depositor, the person who has money, to bring him to save his money with us or to invest it whichever way. But it is the same safe and we deal with it the same way. It makes you happy to tell you that it is halal. We will tell you that it is halal. But we do the same with your money and with the money of the other person who before depositing his money, he knows that he will be collecting 10%, 11% or 20% uh, right now, 20% in some banks uh, as interest doesn't care. He only cares about how much revenue will I get guaranteed and my capital sum is fixed. This is 100% riba, no doubt in this regard. Okay? But some people are reluctant to deposit their money with us because of the fixed rate, so we make it, uh, you know, sounds halal for them by saying it's Islamic. Uh, how much will you get? Oh, maybe 16, 14, 13, we're not sure. So he will give you less just to make you happy. What matters is not what has been said. What matters is something deeper than that. What do they do with my money? If I have a couple million and I leave it in this bank, deposited in a current account or as an investment, what happens? What do you invest it in? How do you invest it? In a conventional bank, they do not really care about legal and illegal from an Islamic perspective as far as when somebody comes to borrow the money from the bank, which will be my money and everybody's money, you know, or a portion from each one of us from their money, it will be given to a, a debtor, somebody who's borrowing to build a nightclub, perhaps a movie theater, maybe a pharmaceutical company, as you said, great, but I don't have an access to know where my money will be invested. And it is not really invested. They give the money to this person 
they give the money so that they will charge interest on that as a creditor and they don't really care whether his project is profitable or encountered a loss they take their guarantees so that they will guarantee your capital sum as well this whole picture is absolutely forbidden in our religion so what matters is I want to know how would you invest my money now Muhammad from the KSA do you follow me if this conventional bank say that we are doing or making a pharmaceutical company as a bank we're investing in a pharmaceutical company we'll take your money and whoever else is interested and you will be getting you'll be getting 20 percent 30 percent of the net profit is that permissible of the net profit yes that is permissible so I will be getting a certain percentage of the net profit after all the expenses and utilities and all of that and the same percentage is also true in case that uh, it encounters loss so I would also lose from my capital sum a similar percentage so it is not guaranteed 100% that I will be getting how much money exactly rather it will be a percentage of the profit not of my capital sum there is a big difference in between so if this is the case with the bank even if it is run by non-believers it doesn't matter didn't Prophet Muhammad وسلم, buy and sell and mortgaged with the Jews yes he did it is halal to deal with non-Muslims and to make business with non-Muslims provided it is on Islamic terms may Allah the Almighty guide us to what is best we'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes please stay tuned after a messenger after a messenger ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Prophet Nuh alayhi salam Prophet Hud alayhi salam Prophet Salih alayhi salam Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam Prophet Musa alayhi salam Prophet Isa alayhi salam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a series of the lights of guidance discussing the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learning from their lives going through this exciting amazing informative special journey with the lights of guidance on Huda TV where we will discuss together we will live together with each and every prophet in an amazing episode learning from them pondering upon their experience meditating upon their life relating to it and getting lessons that affects us in our life to be the servants and the followers of those prophets and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be discussing this series of lights of guidance so be with me and join me in this beautiful series so we learn together and we pass it through the next generation so please join us on Huda TV I will be with you in this amazing journey wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in seven different ways of recipe. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, she's a woman by herself. She doesn't even have a husband who's ever touched her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a child to Maryam alayhi salam. Look at that. He said that, how will I have a child? How will I have a child whilst I've never even been touched by a man? One of the unique things about the story is that it's not like Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses. Can you imagine that Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses? He became sick from the effect that this ayah ended up having on his, on his mind. A 
if you are not positive, you cannot motivate. Absolutely. If you are not positive, you cannot recognize. You cannot even look for the good things. Absolutely. Unless it is in your hmm. heart, you hmm. cannot practice it and exercise it with other people. <coughs> the meaning of the word La ilaha illallah to everyone, to all the people who are around him. Right. As many people as he can. So this is the mission. Mm -hmm. But this concept solves many problems. Yes. Whenever you visit a place that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sitting in, mm. if you don't know him, you will never be able to say that this is Prophet Muhammad or this is Prophet Muhammad. Tell me about a person in this world who does not need mercy. Hmm. Mercy is a key way of or course. a key word for healing the hearts of human beings. What happens is they get so many rejections that they feel so bad about themselves. They don't know that what's been rejected now is your current skills, your current experience, which by time and effort can develop. Yeah. But primarily, you are going to you are doing this job, so perfect it. And this is part of our great religion, is mm. perfection. And perhaps mm. there is another chapter about this. Perfect right. your work. Give mm -hmm. the right to the job that you have. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sister Amina from the USA, mashallah, she's a revert. And among her questions, she said that, you know, some people say that how come that this is a man's religion, that you find only uh, either the Quran or the hadith addressing the man. This is absolutely not true whatsoever. I said I will provide you the references from the Quran, then inshallah from the Sunnah. Take number one in Surah An-Nisa. And by the way, it's called Surah what? An-Nisa, the women. There is no other sacred book whatsoever of all the previous books. All, all the books which its followers, they perceive them as sacred, while we believe that they are not the books of Allah. Not a single book. And I do teach comparative religions. Not a single book. There is a chapter or a division which is called women or the women, a whole surah. And this surah in ayah number 124, Allah Almighty says, And whosoever does good, good deeds, whether a male or a female, while in a state of belief, while in a state of belief, Mu'min. Fa'ulaika had khulun al jannah. Such people shall enter paradise and they will not be wronged and art. In Surah Al Nahl, verse number 97, again Allah the Almighty says, Man amila saliha min zakarin aw untha wa wa mu'minun. Man amila saliha min zakarin aw untha wa wa mu'minun. Fala nuhi yannahu hayatan tayyibatan. Another beautiful verse. Whosoever does good deeds, whether a male or a female, while he or she is a believer, we shall give them a goodly life in this life and we shall reward them according to the best of what they used to do. Okay. Um Mu'mineen, Um Salama, radiallahu anha, inquired about, Ya Rasulullah, how come that we, we hear that Allah is addressing men, like what you just said? What about us? So Allah the Almighty revealed, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ It's a long ayah, num ayah number 35, chapter Al-Ahzab number 33. It's a long ayah, talking about the following. If you have time, you can quote the ayah that most verily, the Muslims, men and women, the believers, men and women, the uh, righteous men and women, the truthful men and women, الصادقين والصادقات, the patient men and women, الخاشعين, the humble men and women, الصائمين والصائمات, the fasting men and women, الحافظين فروجهم والحافظات, those who guard their chastity, uh, and الحافظات men and women, الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات, those who remember Allah much, men and women, 
All of them, Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward. But imagine if every time Allah is addressing the believers, he has to say, all of you, men and women, men and women, there is no need because it has been already confirmed. It has been already confirmed in many ayat. So this is it. It is more than sufficient. The claim that this is man's religion is absolutely not true. Beautiful chapter in the Quran, a whole surah called Surah Maryam alayhi salam. Do you have in the Bible a surah called Mary? Do you have in the Bible a surah called the women? Explaining all the rights of the women? Tayyib. What about this beautiful verse of Surah Al-Baqarah? وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ One of the most comprehensive instructions with regards to the women rights. You know when we keep talking about women rights and you know that you're coming from the U.S. and you know that how women suffer greatly of domestic violence which may end up with killing, injury and all of that. Allah the Almighty says for them, for women, they do have rights similar to those which are due upon them. Bil ma'roof. On the basis of kindness, according to people's customs. You know? So it is not only one way that men have rights and women do not have rights, or women have rights more than men do have. No. It is the same duties and obligations on both. This is how it is in Islam. Now, if you personally, or if you know somebody who has a terrible experience, this is not the way we judge a religion. Because all what it would cost me, just a simple search. To search, as I said, online, the domestic violence in the most liberal countries, uh, Christian-dominated countries, or the countries who do not even believe in God, and you will be shot with the statistics, with the facts about women violence, and how women are being put into labor, because if they do not do that, they may not find a man whom they will become like a life partner too, because, hey, I'm not going to work alone, you know? Uh, it, it's, it's a fact that you need to ask Muslim women who are married to practicing Muslim men, not practicing by the way they only pray and they fast. As I said that, they are true in their religious commitment. So this is simply the condition in, of women in Islam. I'll be more than happy to send you a beautiful book about women rights in Islam if you send your uh, address, inshallah. Azza jal. Um, as far as what a person should do in case that their faith is much lesser than the day on which they accepted Islam. I don't want you to think that only reverts suffer of this condition. No. I suffer of the same condition. The preachers, the ulama, the scholars, and as a matter of fact, the most frequently recited supplication of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, indicates that the hearts do change. He constantly used to ask Allah, Oh Allah, keep my heart firm on your religion. Because we live in the dunya, there are ups and downs, tests and tribulations and trials. And the iman increases and decreases. But we also know what increases one's iman and what decreases one's iman. Last episode, last week before I traveled, I quoted a woman, the wife of Thabit ibn Qais. She came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, Ya Rasulullah, my husband Thabit ibn Qais, I do not hold anything against him as far as deen or akhlaq, religious commitment or manners. Walakinni akrahu al-kufra fil islam I'm just afraid that I will be practicing such, such a big sin or maybe even to the extent of being kuf while I'm a Muslim woman. I cannot live with this man. Most of the problems which women feel and may decrease their iman because of bad experiences or a bitter taste of dealing with this person or that person. Then they turn to say, look, this is Islam. Oh, look, these are the guys who are religiously committed because you are not lucky enough to find the right person. 
but there are many people who are very happy in their life and they are very appreciative so you do not judge a whole religion and a whole society because of the practice of a few individuals or even many people because we have the constitution we have the menu to follow in order to be rightly guided to maintain the level of our iman and also to live happily in this life remember ayah number 97 of surah an-nahl man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'minun falanuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyiba whosoever does good deeds while he or she is a believer min dhakarin aw untha whether a male or a female while he or she is a believer, we shall make their life happy and goodly. Wallahi, sister, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah. As much as we commit ourselves to the deen of Allah, we experience joy and happiness. And we're very delighted. Even if we are tested, we are grateful. And we are thankful because we know that the tests and the trials are inevitable. And for being patient upon being tested, you will be rewarded much greater than you can uh, imagine. May Allah the Almighty strengthen, strengthen your faith uh, and as I said I will be more than happy inshallah to send you some uh, booklets in this regard. Uh, Sister Maryam from United Arab Emirates has a very important question. Her question is about that the last one and a half years she feels that she's been suffering from an evil eye which is possible because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the evil eye is a reality is not some sort of superstition or fiction no it's a reality and that's why we recite in the Quran and in order to protect ourselves against the envies the hasad and the evil eyes um, as far as the solution what to do I asked her, do you know the person? She said she knows her for sure. And this is possible. Because it may happen through a statement that the person does. Somebody comes to visit your house. He sees you married. And you're innocently talking about how neat is your husband, how kind. He's fulfilling every dream of yours. And you go vacations here and there. This woman is sitting and listening. Her life is terrible. And she has a stinky husband. And all what happens is she says, lucky you. Okay, and you can feel it. She's envying you. Lucky you. I wish I was married to a man like your husband. She said it already. So this is an indication. I do not dismiss your thought or your suspicion totally. Allah the Almighty knows best whether your you know anticipation is right or wrong. But if you know the person for sure, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered al ain Al ain is a person who casts the evil eye which may happen even without intending. Believe it or not, the person may do that. A person may envy his own property, his own belonging. Nice Lexus you're driving. I love this car. Say what? Allahumma barik li fiha. Because when you say so, you block the evil eye, but it's my car, yes. One can envy his own property, his own belonging, his own spouse, or her own spouse, or their own children. So say, Masha Allah, this is Allah's will. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma barik li fiha. And if it is the property of others, say, Barak Allahu laka fiha. Barik. That is the meaning when somebody says barik. And when somebody says, Oh man, you have such a beautiful eyes. Oh man, your hair is such and such. Say, Barik, Barik. Say, say, Allahumma barik. I'm not envying you. I'm a good person. Even if you're a good person, say, Allahumma barik. There is nothing wrong with saying that. And take this hadith. In order to know what I'm talking about, the hadith is a sound hadith. I know we ran out of time, but this is very important. Our uh, producer got to uh, be patient with me for a little bit. For all the viewers, Abu Umama, uh, Sahil ibn Hunayf, may Allah be pleased with him, said that uh, there was a sahabi by the name Amr ibn Rabi'ah. He have seen Sahil ibn uh, Hunayf, may Allah be pleased with him, with all of them. He was once taking a bath. And as you know that when the person is taking a bath, uh, his body is exposed and Sahl was a very beautiful and handsome person uh, the Meccans and the people in, in the Bedouins 
with dark complexion. But this guy was very fair complexion, had a very fair complexion, very white. So he showed that he's very impure. Look at his white skin. When he said so, all of a sudden Sahel fell unconscious and he collapsed. And he was so sick, so weak and very vulnerable. So they took him home and he wouldn't even move. He was like paralyzed. So they ran to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, uh, hurry, Sahel is, is collapsing and he can talk, he can move. He said, what happened? Tell me what happened. So they said that, well, Amr ibn Rabi, I saw him while he was taking a bath and he said this remark, I have never seen any beautiful skin like that before. So the Prophet وسلم, gathered him and said, Alama yaqtulu ahadukum akha. For what? Why would one of you kill his brother? This is what the Prophet وسلم, said. Ala barakt. You should have said, Allahumma barak. Baraka means a blessings. Oh Allah, bless him. MashaAllah, he's healthy, he has a good body. Oh Allah, bless him in his body. He's beautiful kids. And you don't say, Allahumma barik lahu fi waladeh. Bless his children and make my children like them. Somebody is driving in a very nice vehicle. Oh Allah, bless him in it. And give me something similar to it or even bigger and better. It is okay to invoke Allah that to have similar to it. But ask Allah to bless him in it. Not to cast that evil eye of yours on that person or his property or his belonging. So what happened afterward? How did the Prophet Sallallahu saw this out? Because you know that we, when it comes to the deen, we do not scratch our head unless if I say, Qala Rasulullah, there is a hadith or there is an ayah. I, I wouldn't give you anything out of my pocket, you know? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Igtasillah, take a bath for him. He said to the person who cast an evil eye upon, even though it was by accident, Amr ibn Rabi'ah. He said, Igtasillah. What does it mean? Wash your body for him. Why? We will learn. So uh, Amr ibn Rabi'ah washed his face, his hands, and he rinsed his mouth in, in, in a vessel. Then his uh, knees and his feet and inside his izar, and the water was collected. Then it was given to Sahl. And Sahl washed his body with this water. And he got up as if he was not affected with any evil eye. He recovered immediately. So this is the sunnah. If you know the person for sure, and there is no hard feelings, I think you may have done that by accident, by mistake. So would you ask her to take a shower or give you the water in, in, a, in a container? It doesn't have to be a shower. The person can maybe perform wudu only or wash the face, the hands, and the mouth especially. And this water will be collected, okay? And you pour it over yourself, it will remove the evil eye. That, in addition to reciting the regular adhkar in the morning and the evening, beautiful dhikr is like a shield, like an armor, for all Muslims, listen to it. Every morning and every evening, after you pray Fajr every day, and after you pray Asr every day, recite the following three times. Say, Bismillah, alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil samai wa huwa sami'u al-alim. In the name of Allah, with whose name nothing in the heavens or on the earth can hurt or harm whatsoever. Recite this supplication three times in the morning and in the evening. Again, Bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil samai wa huwa sami'u al-alim. Don't forget the mu'awwidat, the last three chapters. You collect your palms, you recite them, all the three at once. Then, and you wipe over your face, over your head, over your chest. You do that three times, again in the morning and in the evening. This is one of the best means of protection. And as I said, the hadith of washing the body for Al-A'in, the person who may have cast the evil eye, so that you collect the water and you pour it over your body and you wash with it. Brothers and sisters, we really went over time. May Allah Almighty accept from all of us and forgive us our sins. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to address. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate.